do go on. It is uh, Matt Stewart here. I'm here with, well, I'm here by myself, actually, because um, I'm here actually sitting in the studio in Dave Warnicky's chair, so I feel a little bit bad, because uh, I am, uh, but those guys aren't here, because I'm, I'm here to tell you that we've, done, we've just done another live episode at the Imperial Hotel as part of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which was a lot of fun, um, so I'm just introing that now um, by myself, which, jeez... Without them uh, reining me in, who knows what kind of madness I could get up to here. It actually feels quite weird speaking into the mic in a room by myself. Um, that's all right. I, um, I I hosted this one this week. I was the report giver, and it was quite a bit of fun. Um, before we get into that, I should let you know, next week there is one final episode, or this week coming, this Sunday coming, uh, if you're just listening to this the week it came out, at the Imperial Hotel again, and we've got a special guest, so there'll be four of us this week. Um, I wonder if you could guess who that is. I'm a bit sick in this week's episode, and still am now, so um, how about hashtag pray for Matt for once? Hey, how about that? I bet I won't get that trending, because you guys don't give a fuck about me like you do about Jess, but that's okay. I'm cool with that. I've sort of resigned myself to that fact. What a sad start to the show. Sorry about that, everyone. I know you care and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, big episode this week. And you should also know that uh, Dave, Jess and I... Well, actually, Dave's shows will all be done by the time this comes out. But Jess and I still have our shows going on. Jess in Twins uh, at the Greek Centre at 6.15 each night. And my show, uh, Pretty Dry, at the uh, Chinese Museum... 8.30 nightly, uh, 7.30 on Sunday. And uh, there's a discount code for Do Go On listeners, which is Pretty Podcast. Yeah? So it's a mix of Pretty Dry, the name of my show, and Podcast, the thing I'm doing right now. Very clever. I didn't come up with it, but Jesus, it is on some level genius. Um, so anyway, I don't know if there's anything else I need to tell you before getting into the episode. I'll check back in at the end. Thanks for listening. I love yous. Do go on live at the Melbourne Comedy Festival week three. How you doing? I had not noticed there's an aircon right there. Yeah, it's, it's very cold. Distracting. Um, <laughs> it's cold. Well, everyone, cold. thank you for respectfully leaving uh, two rows as we as we do prefer. <laughs> yes, uh, it is Easter Sunday, so a uh, sign of respect. Three, <laughs> two rows. The Father, three. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you are the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Uh, Matt, uh, how are you? You're in a you're in a, a jumper. Yeah, I'm I'm not feeling very good. <laughs> He's fine. When is that your your go-to stance when you're uh, not feeling good? You put on a jumper. Yeah, especially when you position yeah. me right underneath the air conditioning. I've got a cold. <laughs> I told you that, and then you made me sit right underneath. The, anyway, it's fine. But can, I feel like it's a, a terribly placed air conditioner. Can anyone in the audience the the, ho- the hottest part? Because you are red hot, by the way. Can anyone feel that air conditioning? Stop hitting on the audience. Oh, you can? She's See, you should have sat in the front rows. <laughs> up the back, you can burn for all I care. Whatever. You if made are, your choice. If there is are it people up the back who want to move forward, there's literally six, seven seats at the front if you want to move. If not, totally fine. It's That's the okay. It's the hot, it's the hot section up. Is where the action is at. Um, if you yeah. really want to get in the pod. Um, get in the pod. It's like going to the... There's a the seat right pod. here, and Dave will probably touch you if you sit there. <laughs> He will definitely touch you. I promise not to touch you. (laughs) I make no promises. Um, I'm also really unwell. No, I'm just hungover. Um, (laughs) I was dancing till 4am. I am sprightly. I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night. (laughs) Let me hear it for sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're well rested because you know the van's asleep yeah. in the house. It's going to be a big, uh, big Sunday. It is uh, the long weekend uh, in uh, in Melbourne, but uh, comedy never sleeps. Comedy never sleeps. Does anyone know the footy score? The oh Saints are on at the moment. Anyone? They're down. down. Okay. Great. Uh, you well, so am I. <laughs> You really could have lied just to pep him up because he yeah. is doing the report today. So you, you've probably just ruined the show. <laughs> I don't want to put that I on mean, your no show. I mean, no pressure. But I th- well, the Saints did that, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, the Saints did that. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm good. Let's do it. All right. P- f- podcast. Trivia. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Question one. Okay. Uh, give me a round of applause if you have heard the, the podcast before. <laughs> 
This is good. <laughs> okay, front row, you're very brave, but have you heard the podcast before? No, not once. Not once? No, not once. <laughs> Never. I will, I will, I will refuse. <laughs> you have a lot of faith. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, you. thank you. What brought you here then? Oh, very cool. Oh, very you're cool, her sister. You. Ah, oh, very the good. The cool sister. Am I right? Am I guessing awesome. that right? Awesome. <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> you should have seen her face. She was like, yes. She is cooler than me. <laughs> I'm a lame, but I'm trying, and that's why I'm here today. She said that with her eyes. All right. <laughs> you read a lot into that. Uh, have, you, have you just lost faith in us? <laughs> yeah, slowly. Slowly uh, faith. Give me a round of applause, Eva, uh, like our friend of the front row. You have never heard the show before. A few others, awesome. Well, up the front, this is amazing. There's people on the back that have heard every episode ten times. But they they feel more comfortable with their eyes closed, yeah. you know? They're on the tram they or they're in bed. They don't want us to be real people. Yeah, they don't. Well, Sorry. If, if you haven't heard the show before, I hope you at least vaguely know what it is. What happens is uh, one of us is going to uh, do a report on a topic. It's and, me. Uh, this week it is Matt. <laughs> and uh, some of you probably know what the topic's going to be because I imagine some of you support our Patreon, do you? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, they, they don't know. They know. They know the options. Oh, so they don't know the results. So they no. would have known the options because all, what we do is uh, with Matt's topics, he throws them out uh, onto Patreon, and all our subscribers get to on there get to vote for the topic they'd like Matt to do. And uh, Matt, have they chosen wisely? Just for the people who are new to the show, a lot of it is just admin. We just sort of a lot of explaining <laughs> things that go. We'll reference ourselves a lot, and um, and then yeah, that will wrap it up soon after that. <laughs> Yeah. So that is a pretty fun pretty, time pretty if, you, if you're into admin yeah. And uh, <laughs> we are, big oh time man. And stats It's a fact slash admin based podcast Can I just, should I? Yeah, yeah please So at the, uh, the Planet Broadcasting launch I ran into a listener named uh, Harrison right? And he was like, oh there's not enough Australian topics right? That's what he said to me is, Can't we do some more Australian topics? You know? And I told him my first ever report Was actually about Australian rules football Right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, but, but apart from that. And I was like, oh, well, my second report <laughs> was about the Australian explorers, Burke and Wills. And he goes, oh, yeah, sure, apart from that. And I said, oh, I've also done episodes on Triple J's Hottest 100, <laughs> Stephen Bradbury, The Wiggles, The Great Emu War. And he said, yeah, of course, but, you know, apart from apart that. Apart from that. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, yeah, apart from that. Um, good point. Um, <laughs> So this week, the three uh, suggestions I took out of the hat uh, were all Australian topics. And I uh, put them up to the vote. And these are the topics. And I guess my question to you is, which one did they vote for? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. We have to get into the mind of the listener. Option, <laughs> option number one, Nick Cave. Oh. Option <laughs> number... <laughs> I remember... A couple of... Uh. <laughs> I remember one time we had a listener comment on our Facebook page and they, ac- they wrote Nick Cave, meaning Nick Cage. And I thought that they were doing a hilarious joke. And they were like, sorry, I don't know who Nick Cave is. <laughs> So, it was just a typo. (laughs) What a fun story, Dave. Thank you so much for sharing. Round of applause for Dave's fun story. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Dave. Option number two, Steve Irwin. Oh, okay. AKA the Crocodile Hunter. Mm -hmm. Right. One time, there was this comment on our Facebook page. Someone made a hilarious joke, and I thought they were saving Steve (laughs) Perwin. They meant Nick Cave. (laughs) Hilarious. Dave Warnicky, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and option number three, Vegemite. Oh. oh. The, e- the enemy of all tourists. <laughs> Have you noticed how celebrities come out here? They're like, you must try Vegemite, you must. And they're always just like, eh, <laughs> eh. Sorry. Sorry, Dave. What are they like? <laughs> eh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my impression of all celebrities. <laughs> I think it's Vegemite's similar to the other two. You've got you to grow up with them to, to understand them, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, but I, I would say that at, out of the three, th- there's one that I think would appeal to our overseas listeners the most. Okay. So it's what, it's what I would have picked. Sure. Purely for the, s- the stats for our overseas listeners <laughs> to appeal. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of... Lot but of I don't know, but here, maybe but the Patreon people you're don't... You're going to say it out loud? Are you going to tell them what you're thinking <laughs> or...? <laughs> Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, well, if you were asking what I'd say, Steve Irwin, I think. Jess? I would also say Steve Irwin. Yes, you guys are correct. From yes. the 152 votes, 25 went for Nick Cave, 51 for Vegemite, and 78 for Steve Irwin. So over 50%. That's maths. I'd look that up <laughs> on a calculator. <laughs> 
that's what you do on a calculator. I looked it up on. Yeah. So I looked it up on a calculator. <laughs> use a calculator like Google. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little sick. This, uh, so this topic was suggested by a couple of people: Cameron via Twitter at Cam Yabba, and Callum B W on the email. Oh, on the email. Yeah. They, they both sound like true blue Aussie patriots. Cam Yabba. Yeah. <laughs> Yabba do, <laughs> as we say here in Australia. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'm going to forge on. Steve Irwin uh, was a uh, wildlife conservationist. <laughs> Good start. A zoo owner, <laughs> television personality, educator, and most famously a crocodile hunter. Oh, but I've never heard of him. Oh, well. You're thinking uh, of hang Nick around. Cage. Yeah, Nick Cage. Stephen Robert Irwin, full name, uh, was born to parents Lynn and Bob in Essendon, which is a suburb of Melbourne, Australia. Okay, you guys yeah. here will be fascinated to n- learn that. Uh, it was on the 22nd of February 1962, Essendon as you guys will know, is the team that won the first (laughs) VFL (laughs) Australian Rules Football Premiership. I'm just linking it back to a past episode, right? But it's also the suburb of Melbourne that Burke and Wills camped in on the first (laughs) night of the exhibition. Okay. It's a hotbed, Essendon. (laughs) It's a hotbed. It's a sacred suburb of Do Go On. Uh, Steve's family were right into native, uh, Native Australian animals. They were bloody right into them, you know. Are you trying to imply that there's something untoward going on between the Irwin family and these native animals? No. Uh, they were right into them. <laughs> they were right into them. Particularly reptiles. And Steve, when <laughs> Steve was actually given a 12-foot python for his sixth birthday. Sixth birthday. Oh, Dave, it sounds like sixth. you're saying it like I do. Sixth. Sixth. Dave, have a go. Sixth. There Is that go. right? Yes. Is that right? Feels right. <laughs> Feels In so right. This is just like in the studio where I'm going to keep trying to start a sentence and... I'm going to interrupt you constantly. In 1970 Six. when... In <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Set that one up. All right. In 1970 when Steve was still quite young, the family moved from Victoria to Queensland where his parents founded the Biwa Reptile Park. Biwa? Biwa. How do you, how do you spell Biwa? Biwa. Biwa. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as a boy, Steve would head out to the Queensland outback with his old man, Bob, to help trap lizards, snakes and crocodiles to take back to their park. Isn't Bob a good dad name? It is a good dad Is name. anybody's dad's name Bob? Disappoint. Oh, all right, hang on there. A couple yes. of hands, a couple of hands. That all was right. a pity hand. Your dad is not Oh, Bob. your dad's having a Bob. But thank you so much for having my back. <laughs> Unlike the rest of you jerks. <laughs> nah. They were... They were quite proud of it that most of nearly all the reptiles in their park were captured by them by hand oh, oh, so they were quite proud that they'd taken some animals that were once roaming free <laughs> yeah. but now inside a small container yeah, yeah they were proud of that <laughs> I imagine that their whole zoo was inside something that could fit under Steve's bed like a show and tell project <laughs> he opens it up there's like several hundred crocodiles inside many animals died <laughs> <laughs> but I'll let Matt tell you about it Many animals died. <laughs> um, Not the topic well. <laughs> uh, at the fledgling park, did I, there's sometimes in the studio where I'll, I'll have about four or five cracks at a word, <laughs> but I don't have that luxury here today. At the fledgling park, a young Irwin became increasingly involved in a day in the day-to-day operations, taking on jobs such as feeding the animals and also some maintenance tasks. See, it is a pretty, pretty interesting report so far. <laughs> there's the admin. But there's more. He also accompanied his dad on expeditions for the East Coast Crocodile Management Program, which was a government... <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile management. Imagine. <laughs> I'm the boss of all the crocodiles. No, I'm imagining a business school for crocodiles. And they're all wearing ties. <laughs> That is pretty good. Uh, it's a fun, good. fun place I went in my head. Um, I wish you all could have been there. <laughs> you uh, just can't. It was a government-funded program intending to reduce crocodile hunting by relocating them to uh, less populated areas. You know? right, so to reduce crocodile hunting, and this man would grow up to be the crocodile hunter. <laughs> oh, the irony <laughs> is there, I suppose, <laughs> if you look hard enough. Uh, which <laughs> you did, um, but he management. but he took him from these populated areas to other places, such as his 
park. <laughs> you know, less populated, only unless you're talking about tourists, and then it's quite populated. <laughs> but I guess, anyway, apparently... It's my new catchphrase is anyway. <laughs> Apparently on one of these outings at age nine, Steve wrestled his first crocodile. That's a classic rite of passage. At nine, yeah. For an Aussie right. boy. I did, it I did it at seven. Oh. So, <laughs> you know. Jess, how old were you when you uh, were a young boy that wrestled a crocodile? <laughs> Five. Oh. <laughs> that is young. Thank you. The crocodile prodigy. <laughs> yeah. I'm the toughest one on this podcast. <laughs> I will kill both of you. <laughs> she will. He, d he did it by jumping on its back, right? And on, on uh, one of these sources I read, it said, a technique he used many more times through his career. Ah, oh, jump on their back. Yeah. Not somehow jumping on their front. <laughs> yeah. Flip them over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on top of them. <laughs> <laughs> I am essentially humping a crocodile. <laughs> Dave. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I went to it's a fun East place in my head just then. I wish you could all could have been there. <laughs> it's Easter Sunday. Come on. Hey, we've got the seats of respect. We can yeah, say whatever we want. That's true. As Steve grew older, he continued to work with the East Coast Crocodile <laughs> Management Program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, into his early 20s, Steve started to work with them on his own and for months at a time, he, he would live in the bush by himself just hanging out with crocodiles. Just months and years at a time. Just living amongst the crocs. Just living the in crops. the bush amongst the crocodiles by himself. What a bloody character. And sometimes he would get a little bit lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your face? I don't want to know, I don't want to know. I regret asking the question. Yes. Is that my face when I have sex with a crocodile? Know. Oh, with a crocodile, that's right then. <laughs> that's uh, burnt into my brain. Sorry, everybody. So during the, these, these years <laughs> spent out in the bush alone with the crocs... Um, Just teaching him management skills. He also he learned a lot about the craft of catching crocs. Um, one thing, so which it's a little bit different from... Um, other people's craftenoons, I guess. His uh, craftenoons. <laughs> croc. He. Uh, Big fans of craft. <laughs> Big fans. In 1991, at the age of 29, Steve took over the Biwa Park from his parents. And once again, how do you spell Biwa? It's beer. Uh huh. B -E 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 uh -huh. beer. Yep. Wa. Okay. W a h. No, no, no. I got it was that. an important question and worth following up on. <laughs> Is that uh, a capital B? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, the well, you know. <laughs> after taking over the following year, he, he quickly made his mark by changing its name to the Australia Zoo, ah, which catching. is what it's famously known as now. I, who, who prefers the name Biwa? That seems more Biwa's Australian cooler, somehow right? than the Australian Zoo. Cut those motherfuckers. <laughs> Every week. Every week. In 1991, he also met an American traveller named Terry Rains. Rains? That's a great name. <laughs> Rains? It's a good name. No one's on board. No. <laughs> Rains! I'll say it more. <laughs> Terry Rains. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> Uh, that seems excessive. We should enter our show like that. Imagine if we called the police. <laughs> Someone is being murdered next door. But we record the whole thing. That'd be so good. And then they're like, hey, do you guys know who called the police? We're like, no. Nah. <laughs> you guys that have our backs, right? Oh, I don't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> they would not. <laughs> They'd throw us under the bus. You're all snitches. Anyway, Terry Rains. Uh, yeah, so we met her in 1991 when she came to visit the zoo. Uh, Rains was an American businesswoman from Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon. Eugene is. Oh, I've heard not of that. A good, I love it. Something about it I really love. You guys are easily impressed with names. <laughs> Rains. Eugene. Ooh, Eugene. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's a place, though, called Eugene. <laughs> you weren't impressed with a place called Biwa. Still nothing for you. Still nothing. But Eugene. Eugene, Eugene, Oregon. Nah, don't like Really that. does something for me. Cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Back home, uh, Rain's father ran a trucking company uh, where she had also worked. She was learning the skills of managing a large business, that large oh. business being the trucking company that I just mentioned. But not, yeah. sorry, just to clarify, not managing crocodiles. <laughs> no, not Or cro- teaching crocodiles management. No, not, it was just... Yeah. Interesting. Just the truck stuff. Not yeah. a leadership development program for young up-and-coming crocodiles. <laughs> Who we see potential in. I wish it was now. I really do. I wish it was also. I really do. You've I mean, never I've let me down more than with this report right now. <laughs> I mean, I, the report doesn't like exclusively say that she only did trucking. It's possible. Yeah, okay. No. I'm willing to rule that in. Okay. <laughs> Let's rule it in. Her father ran a trucking and large crocodile management teaching university company thank you where she had worked learning the skills of managing a large business uh-huh. including crocodile management <laughs> and double windsor knots on crocodiles yeah you gotta know they got thick necks do have big old necks i think you gotta get custom made ties uh in, so, in some ways they're all neck <laughs> that's a long neck that's beautiful dave in some ways they're all neck. <laughs> I'm putting that on a t-shirt. And a crocodile with a really, really long neck. <laughs> but then he's got a tie. <laughs> just right at the bottom. <laughs> just above his little arms. <laughs> I'm having a good time. We, we, uh, we know a lot about crocodiles. Long neck. Arms. <laughs> <laughs> Green? I think. Matt, do go on. No, I was, en- I was enjoying that. Um, you weren't. Your face said, shut the fuck up, you idiots. I was thinking about the Saints. Any updates <laughs> on the... Okay. Uh, can I get... This is Jess's yeah. iPad. Can I get footy schools on this? No. Terry's dad often... <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Terry's dad often brought home injured animals he found along the highways that his trucks travelled down. Were they ever crocodiles? Doesn't say that they weren't. So we don't know for sure. So yes. Um, and and this has seen this is this has been seen to be where her passion for the animals sort of kicked off. Um, in the 1980s, Terry started a rehab facility called Cougar Country. It was just for old ladies who had a taste for younger men. <laughs> yes. Now that, yeah. Now that's an academy I want to be a part of. We'll teach you how to get them. <laughs> All right, I girls. Sure leopard Country- print and low cut. <laughs> I think it's a reality TV show. Cougar Country. (laughs) I like it. Starring Terry (laughs) Raines. That's my future. (laughs) What, running the or being part of the Cougar Country? Both. Yeah. Well, if I'm running it, I'm part of it, aren't I, dickhead? (laughs) That's why you are an entrepreneur. That's why I understand crocodile business management. (laughs) Am I far away? I feel like I'm sitting very far, but I moved forward so that I could see you better. But now I feel like now I feel like I'm over here, like like having a good time. It's like you're over there playing keyboard. <laughs> anyway, Matt's the lead singer. Please sing on. There we go. There we go. Uh, so this cougar country thing, as, lo- as well as doing the stuff that you were just saying. Uh, <laughs> We're not listening. <laughs> she, she also uh, she was also there to re-educate and release predatory mammals such as foxes, possums, raccoons, bears, <laughs> bobcats, and of course cougars. Ah, <laughs> elderly ladies who got lost in the wilderness <laughs> and send them back into the wild. Yeah, I don't know what the re-education involved yeah, in what exactly. They, what are they re-educating? Just giving him a compass. I think. Ma- yeah, it's weird, like, I saying don't be predators, but that would just be sending them out to their death, wouldn't it? So I guess it's just educating them on... Management skills. Management skills, yeah. <laughs> How to better manage my teams. Self-esteem. Self-esteem. <laughs> hey, believe in yourself, hey. Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Bobcat was Bobcat Goldthwaite as well. <laughs> that was just before he went into the police academy <laughs> franchise. Okay, um... <laughs> Good on you, Terry Rains. She also worked as a vet technician. Did she have like a hundred jobs? She was bloody busy. <laughs> it said that somewhere. I read it. Real busy. A real busy, real busy body. In terms of having a lot to do. Which is a different meaning to the... 
<laughs> that face that you all just witnessed is my favourite face <laughs> on this planet. <laughs> it's Matt's regret face. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's a... Oh, no. We see it a lot. So much. <laughs> now you'll be able to hear it. You know, you'll know what it is. Uh, but not so busy that she didn't have time to pop down to Australia to check out some of our wildlife Just parks. pop down. Pop down. Just pop down. Pop down. She was on a little holiday. She wanted to check out some, you know, some Australian. Some Australian. Fauna okay. and fauna. You paused too long there. Um. Fauna. Fauna and fauna. <laughs> fauna. Just to emphasise, she f- really <laughs> likes fauna. <laughs> there it is. That's another version of the regret face. <laughs> Flora. Flora and fauna and fauna as well. <laughs> she was underlining the fauna. Um, uh, while she was on the Sunshine Coast visiting a friend, she decided to check out Steve's Park. <laughs> <laughs> are you, wink- are you wink- winking at me? That's a nervous Wink at twitch. them. Wink at... Wink at there we go. <laughs> what, what do you mean by check out Steve's Park? Does uh, Biwa Park mean anything to you? Oh. <laughs> No. <laughs> B E. <laughs> uh, apparently, they met while Steve was doing one of his daily croc feeding demonstrations. Uh-huh. Huh? A scenario straight out of a romance novel. <laughs> is what I've written here. <laughs> That's how I dream of meeting my my future man. Yeah, in some ways, it's just a little too cliche, really. Yeah, I know. Ugh. It's just been it's been yawn. Done. <laughs> Uh, the couple got engaged four months later. Oh, wow. That's a quick... What do you call that? It's courtship. Is that what you call it? You nailed it. Good. And uh, I just think that's quick, but I think that's nice as well. They yeah. knew. They knew. When you know, you know. Mm. You know? Is do anyone you? known? <laughs> just yeah, when you know, you know. Anyone out there known? No, oh, interesting. Oh, okay. huh? It's a lonely audience we've got <laughs> in today. Ooh. That's all right. Lonely podcast listeners. Ooh. <laughs> Those are our people. <laughs> Lonely we're lonely people. as well. <laughs> uh, they were married uh, in 1992 on the 4th of June, just the next year. So, you know, got it done pretty quickly. Terry left her American life behind, including her family's business, her rehab centre and her vet work. She left it all, including the crocodile management <laughs> and the cougar country um, old lady thing as Nailed well. It. <coughs> Thank you. Terry and Steve had a great t- time on their... Ha- Ooh. Terry and Steve had a great time on their honeymoon. (laughs) Oh, that was better. (laughs) And they filmed a lot of their shenanigans. Oh, did they? Oh! (laughs) Steve's Park. Oh! They filmed their honeymoon shenanigans. Uh, Their honeymoon shenanigans. (laughs) (laughs) Terry, don't come in! Don't come in here! What a way to find out. I thought you were taking a long walk. That's why you shouldn't get engaged so early. Yeah, you got to figure uh, these things out about yeah. someone. Yeah. You've got to iron out those When you think creases. you know, but you don't know yeah. everything. <laughs> Does he fuck crocodiles? <laughs> <laughs> you got to find out. Where did they go on their honeymoon? Uh, they, well, they went out, out and about. And, uh, <laughs> no questions, please. I love Dave. what source on the internet says Steve and Terry had a great time on their honeymoon. Their honeymoon shenanigans were a little different uh, to, oh, to most. Oh, I bet they were. Uh, on their honeymoon, they got up to a little bit of old-fashioned crocodile hunting. Oh. If you know what I mean, I've written here. And, um, <laughs> but no, please, I think please, you do. Please, please I explain. just mean, yeah, just going out and, and hunting crocodiles. Um, so he's left his job as a crocodile hunter to go on holiday as a crocodile hunter. <laughs> This guy's crazy. Yeah, I really like this. I've, I've read a, a bunch of the... In, there's a, an article on the Encyclopedia Britannica. It's not hugely in-depth, but this line I feel like was very insightful about... Um, the honeymoon? About the honeymoon and, and them recording um, the stuff that it said. This is from the Encyclopedia Britannica. So it's obviously a good source. <laughs> Irwin recorded some of his exploits on tape using a video camera mounted on a tripod. Aww. That was that was about ten percent of the whole page <laughs> about Steve Irwin's life was was mentioning that the camera was mounted on a tripod. Oh, cool! Thank you, Encyclopedia Britannica. It's Back to Wikipedia, I go. It's, it's it's one of the few things that set him apart as a crocodile hunter. He thought to use a tripod. Yeah, yeah. Every other crocodile hunter just had it on the floor and was just filming the ground. And you could just hear a guy going, Oh, I've got him! I've got him by the neck! Yeah! All right! 
And then they come back and uh, it's really worthless footage. <laughs> Just the sand. Yeah. You put that on a tripod, you're going to get, I imagine, offers from the Discovery Channel pretty quick. <laughs> you are not far off. You are, n- you are n- not with it. <laughs> I am not right. <laughs> You're not okay. No, I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, the Britannica did go on to say that Steve was hired as a consultant for a television commercial not long after this, and he showed some of the tapes. <laughs> he showed the commercial people how to put a camera on top of a tripod. <laughs> it blew their minds. They were very impressed. Do you remember in 1992 when ads in Australia started to be visible? Yeah. <laughs> Before that, was just the <laughs> that was him. He did that. That was him. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Steve Irwin. Uh, so yeah, he was hired as a consultant on a television commercial and he showed some of the tapes to a producer at Ch- Australia's Channel 10 network in Australia and uh, they, Im- they immediately suggested turning them into a documentary. <laughs> Pause for effect. Hold for applause. <laughs> Mentioned the word documentary. <laughs> They're going to lose their minds. <laughs> the, res- the result of which was The Crocodile Hunter. Oh! Which first aired in Australia in 1992. Mm-hmm. It was like his documentary show. And did they use the footage from the That honeymoon? year might not be right. I'm not sure about that year. It aired on TV though. Right. Good. And but did they use the footage that he'd already shot or did they refilm it? No, it was, that was including, yeah, some of the, bed, uh, the uh, honeymoon. <laughs> some of the bedroom footage. Some of the, honey, Look, some Steve, of the honeymoon It's scenes. a great show, but we've only got five out of six episodes. We just need another half an hour of footage. Don't worry, Terry and I have got this. <laughs> Submit a personal tape. The sixth episode, number six, is very different from the first five. No crocodile hunting at all. Just crocodile burning. <laughs> Boning. It was a success, hey? The boning? Yes. <laughs> he <laughs> aborted nah. that sentence. It was a success <laughs> sentence. Oh, boy. It was a success uh, which led to further documentaries being made and eventually a series being commissioned. And four years later, in 1996, the show was picked up by the Animal Planet Channel of the Discovery Network in oh. the United States of America. Oh. I've heard Which of is it. called the big time somewhere, and that's when things really started to take off for the crocodile hunter. Did anyone? Is anyone around in the nineties here? <laughs> did you? Uh, if you, you hang on, uh, if hang you on, no, hang uh, on, how hang did you on, get in? Hang on a sec. Hang on, I'm, get, I'm looking. Yeah, I reckon they all were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's off. But does anyone remember? I don't remember him in the early to mid nineties at all. Does anyone remember? He was. He didn't exist here, really. You were busy, you know, being a hundred and twelve. That's and true. I mean, obviously, I had I things to do. I don't know what do. else you were doing. But I don't. I just time. don't remember him being around at all. Anyway, anyone? No. Cool. Is it why? I think he was. Bi- yeah, it was, was a lot bigger. Like, yeah, okay. He was bigger in America than he was in Australia for a long time. Just like Nick Cave. Well, not no. America, but the UK. So <laughs> that wasn't relatable at all. <laughs> Look. Sometimes a thought pops into your mind and then you say it out loud and, and you now crash the car, I'm crashing my car. <laughs> I'm crashing my car. But bigger, what I'm trying to say is bigger overseas. Much like Vegemite, no. Much like, this, much like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually true. Actually true. Uh, at its peak, Steve Irwin's TV shows were shown in more than 100 countries. I Name saw them. Some. Guam. <laughs> <laughs> Puerto Rico. <laughs> Etc. <laughs> uh, some sources. None of, none of those are countries. No. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, didn't you say territories of America? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, some sources actually said more than 200 countries. Are there, are there even that many countries, Dave? Yes, yes, there are. Okay, good. <laughs> it's most of them. Okay. Yeah, so it was big. Real big. Um, audiences were in the, in the multi, multi millions, which is a lot of millions. And. Uh, People really loved watching Irwin's dangerous encounters with snakes, <laughs> spiders, lizards, and crocodiles from the title of his show. <laughs> and over his career, he was bitten many times, often on camera. You, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of these. One of the ones that I watched, which is really great, which I'll post during the week. It was so much fun. Um, there's this video uh, when he was on an Australian kids' TV show. The snake's like wrapped around his neck. And leading up to the bite, this is what he was saying, right? It's so fun. He goes, 
I'm not scaring him. So he won't bite and he hasn't got venom and that's the python. Like, it's almost gibberish, but it's... <laughs> it's just like all these fragmented sentences. It's so much fun. I've got to start from the beginning. I'm not scaring him, so he won't bite me and he hasn't got venom and that's the python. But it's very difficult in... From a distance to tell a python from a... Ah, ah, we might have to cut it. Ah... <laughs> uh, Ah, it's biting my neck. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> but it was like a monitor, like he was so chilled out about it, but he's like, ah, ah, we might have to cut here. It's biting me now. <laughs> it was so good. I gotta, I gotta... We might have to cut. I can't reach the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the best thing about him. Um... <laughs> Oh, no, he did, he did a lot of good things in the community as well, but fuck, that was funny. Um, <laughs> uh, Erwin nearly always got about in his, his trademark khaki shorts and shirt. You probably know that sort of his classic outfit. And he's, it, uh, he's trademark khaki. Khaki. How do you... Is that not right? Khaki. 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 <laughs> Barbados. <laughs> Steve, what are you going to wear today? My khaki <laughs> shorts and my matching khaki shirt. We might have to cut. It's a little too tight. It's taking out the circulation to my neck. So that, khaki. Was, that was kind of like that was what he became famous for in a lot of ways. Was his uh, apart from his attitude and just like his um, love of the dangerous. Oh, come on. I can't I even imagine... I can't even think of a time I ever saw Steve Irwin outside of the khaki. I know, now I'm imagining him wearing a suit and it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's still khaki. I wish you could all come with me to where I am in my head, but... Um, <laughs> ah, it's very good. It looks like he's going to court. <laughs> he's been sued by a snake. <laughs> <laughs> and the snake is wearing a tie. Because he went to a subsidiary of the management school for <laughs> crocodiles. In some way, a snake is all neck. <laughs> <laughs> Please do go on, Matt. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you broke the tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Webby. Remember the time he said snakes were all neck? <laughs> he's nah, dead he's now. Done. He's done. <laughs> so if oh we my cut God, out he's having an asthma <laughs> pop <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> uh, so he, his, him and his khakis uh, became so entrenched in popular culture uh, and he started turning up on all sorts of TV shows. Don't, do you remember him on any... Yeah, picture? like late night... Like yeah, he one was. On, I don't know. He, he appeared in heaps of times on Leno's show, on um, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, like multiple times. Also on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Uh, he was on the Oprah Winfrey show. He was on Rove Live. You get a snake. You get a snake. <laughs> Everybody gets a snake. <laughs> it's my Oprah impression. It's pretty, d pretty damn good. Thank pretty you. Damn good. Now, what's your <laughs> what's your Rove Live? <laughs> So I, say hi, hi to your snake's mum for me. <laughs> <laughs> All neck. Which is funny when he says it, isn't it? <laughs> he was also on uh, Wiggly Safari, which was a Wiggles special. Like he was on a whole episode, as himself. Get out of town. No, no shit in ya. <laughs> he's, he's jumping on Dorothy's back. I got her! I fucking got her! <laughs> Tries oh, to put Dorothy. her in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Matt's face. It'd be funny, wouldn't hey, it? Hey, it's fun. okay. How, how dare you? <laughs> this is a serious topic about an Australian hero. Sorry. sorry You've started wrong. to get a little too silly there. I'm sorry, everybody. You had to see that. Uh, so, yeah, we did, a, we did a Wiggles topic in the past, right? So he's connected to a few of them. He's also connected uh, to The Simpsons. They parod parodied him... And uh, an episode when they had a little uh, snippet of a show called The Gator Beta. And uh, <laughs> he just got eaten alive. And Bart was disappointed that he... Sounds like he's wanking off alligators. 
alligator beta. In what way? Oh, beta, like yeah, masturbator. Alligator masturbator. <laughs> You've had to do a fair bit of work there. Well, it, so does the gator beta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it takes a long time. Uh, it was also parodied on South Park. Um, they had <laughs> Irwin jumping on Crocs oh, and putting putting his thumb up their butts. Yeah. Yeah, no, saying this is the only way this will really piss them off. <laughs> and this is the only way you can really learn about a crocodile is when they're pissed off. So it's a pretty it's a pretty fun parody. He's putting uh, their, putting his thumb up their butts, you see. Uh-huh. Which is a lot which seems you know, I'm into that as an idea. As an idea, Stop obviously. Stop talking. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> I'm just really distracted by these two rows of chairs and that they're, like, that one in particular is, like, Jess length. And I could just have a little lie down. Do it. That, that cord's got length. Anyway, do go on. <laughs> that cord's all neck. <laughs> Yay! It's we did a, it. It's, all, it's a little like a joke, isn't it? He was also seen on the big screen uh, with a cameo as himself in Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doolittle 2. Familiar with that one? Yeah, Dr. Doolittle 2. This time it's personal. (laughs) I don't know if it made it. Dr. Doolittle 2, back in the habit. (laughs) (laughs) What a crossover that would be. Back in the habit is my go-to for any any sequel. It's the best sequel, (laughs) I saw Train Spotting 2 the other day. I was like, ah, Train Spotting 2, back in the habit. (laughs) Oh, that works. Ah, it does work. That's, That's very where good. That's where they go, Dave. <laughs> Dave's trying to do drugs. Oh, no, no. It's giving right, himself yes. a wrist. What I'm doing there is I'm tying a belt around my upper arm and then I'm tapping my lower arm oh, to make my off. vein pop here. I've done heroin many times. <laughs> Please. You do have the physique of a heroin man. <laughs> <laughs> it's heroin chic, all right? <laughs> also, um, we haven't mentioned this today, but you love Hitler. <laughs> I do not. That is it's not funny. true. It's funny that we hadn't mentioned it yet. I know. Yeah. How did really we get this far in? I was having a great time until then. Uh, he was also, uh, the year after that, in 2002, he was in his own feature film. Do you, do you remember this? Oh, no. yes. Actually, I do remember. I think I saw that movie. And, uh, I mean, I didn't because I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, t- I'll tell you a little bit about it and you can tell me what your thoughts on it. What was it called? It was called The Crocodile Hunter Collision Course. Collision Course. I like when so a, an original movie that needs a subtitle like that. Normally. Yeah. It should have been Crocodile Hunter back in the habit. <laughs> <laughs> it works for everything. Only if he was burning them again. Uh, Wah. <laughs> Uh, and the film co-starred his wife, Terry. According to IMDb, this is what happened in Collision Course. The crocodile hunter mistakes some CIA agents for poachers. <laughs> and he why sets... Hang on, sorry. Hang on, yeah. Is it not a documentary? Already no, it's, no, it's a, a, oh it's a film. <laughs> sorry. Why uh, is was everyone else under the assumption that it was a document? I didn't think that it was a scripted... No, it's, it's a scripted. scripted. It's a spy it's film. It's a, it's no, a comedy it's like adventure, a comedy. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but I have questions as to why there'd be CIA agents. Are they in the outback? Well, let look. Uno I mean, momento. I saw the movie. Sorry, I'm really, I'm really excited now. I just thought it was just a... We could act it out. <laughs> All right. So the crocodile hunter mistakes some CIA agents for poachers and sets out to stop them from capturing uh, a wily own. croc, <laughs> which, unbeknownst to him, has swallowed a tracking drone. So it's... What's the opposite what? of far-fetched? I think that's... <laughs> I think that's pretty... Uh, maybe it was a documentary after all. <laughs> What's the opposite of far-fetched? It's a pretty, it's a pretty solid storyline, yeah. um, which probably Common. makes it a bit surprising you guys to find that Metacricket, Metacricket, Metacritic <laughs> uh, scored it a mediocre... <laughs> Metacricket scored it uh, 10 for 66. <laughs> the, uh, with uh, one endings remaining, can Steve Irwin recapture the ashes? <laughs> <laughs> Scored at 50 out of 100, which is pretty average. Or probably exactly average, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that, that's not that bad. It's not, it's not the shittest thing of all time, but it's, it's it means right. it's pretty shit, I think. Right? A movie is half good. That's no good. That's two and a half stars. I think it's not, it's not bad enough to be good again. You know? Oh, so you think it's... That, that's the sequel. Right. <laughs> Crocodile Hunter. Bad enough to be good again. <laughs> Back in the habit. <laughs> Do you have any idea how well it fared box office wise? Uh, fine. 
50 out of 50 out of 100. Yeah, right. The only stats I got here is 50. So I think that's yeah. Out of 100 box offices, um, it got got 50. So that's not too bad. He doesn't understand how in it a works. Lot of ways. That's you know, I'm pretty happy, you know, 50. Get to raise the bat for meta cricket and uh, <laughs> got a cricket joke there. Pretty good. There it is. There's a regret face. Has it come off my face yet nah. today? Uh, Irwin did find himself amidst controversy on a few occasions. He was often criticised, saying that he put at entertainment ahead of the animals' welfare. Right? You know, he's mm. sometimes like I think that's kind of what the South South Park parody was saying. Oh, putting what? his thumb up their butts. Yeah, basically saying, oh, well, Maybe look, they like it. no, I love these crocodiles. That's why I'm wrestling them when they're just happily swimming around in their you know their habitat. Because I love them. It does seem a bit unnecessary. Did he have an argument to why he can wrestle a croc? Yeah, because yeah, he loves them. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, check that. Yeah. Um, and, it, yeah, they did strenuously deny it, you know, whenever they talked about it. Like, no, I've no. never wrestled a croc in my life. <laughs> so uh, I, lo I love them and I, I just want to get to know them. These are, I'm learning. I'm helping educate people. But have you jumped on a person in, in the street? <laughs> have you jumped on a person in the street? As and I said, often do. <laughs> I just want to get to know him. <laughs> yeah. You're going to jail. Uh, not if you give the I'm just getting to know him argument. I've seen that <laughs> yeah. stack up in court. Well, have you stacked that up in court? I have, yeah. I've yeah. stacked that right up. Right. Uh, in 2004 uh, was when came the most publicised controversy. That was when he was photographed feeding a crocodile with his baby son Bob in his arms. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, some were shocked by the images and accused Steve of child endangerment but he was he's like nah man it's cool right That's as long as he doesn't mix up which hands <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> baby here meet here <laughs> oh hang on <laughs> oh no oh bob i'm gonna kiss my little baby bob the <laughs> yeah. red steak oh, it took no. him days to realize um <laughs> he's, a, he's in a, a bit of steak in a high chair yeah. <laughs> jeez bob's lost his steak. appetite <laughs> yeah hasn't eaten in days also bob is not a good baby name though <laughs> Bob. Oh. Anybody a baby called Bob here? <laughs> Is anybody <laughs> same guy? <laughs> I love you. The rest of you can fuck off. <laughs> now nah, you're great. Please stay forever. It's just uh. you and Bob. Son of Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bob. Erwin wasn't charged over the incident. Uh, what uh, charged? Some people thought he should be, and apparently laws in Queensland were cha uh, changed to you say can't that you can't feed a crocodile with a baby. You can't in feed one a home. crocodile. Yeah, that's explicit now in the law. You can't. You apparently, you can't have babies right next to crocodiles anymore. That is why. Guys, that is a nanny PC state. You thought we were in a nanny state. <laughs> I tell you what. Back in our day, you could, I mean, geez Louise. Well, back in my day. Your we, day. Phew, that was a we used time. to feed our babies to crocodiles. <laughs> and that's how they'd learn. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that survived got to put their thumb up their butts. And that is. Wait. That's what I called primary school. <laughs> their own butts? Who's learning there? <laughs> that was the lesson. And they had to figure it out for themselves. Nobody spoon feeding back in my uh, day. No, fair enough. I'll get there. Hang on. Uh, okay, so the baby gets fed to the crocodile. <laughs> okay, and then the, maybe the crocodile's learning that it's grisly. Yeah, gris. Their butts baby. are grisly. I don't look. I'm. I was looking at what's next, and I've missed what you were doing there. I should. That I say. About right, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't mention he had a couple of kids somewhere along the line. Yes. Bob was one of them, and, and also. Uh, another one named Bindi. Yeah, who's on Dancing with the Stars? Oh. And I like I wanna I wanna like her, but I fucking don't. <laughs> yeah. Is there something like she's like eighteen, right? There's something so patronising about that bitch. Like, <laughs> go on her Instagram. Fuck me. Like, go on her Instagram and it's, hi everyone. I'm like, what are you hiding, Bindi? <laughs> Let the hate out. Let I don't out. like her. I want to. I want to like her. Here's the thing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like Bindi Irwin. Because I know it's probably the right thing to do for our nation. You know, she goes and she goes, hey, I'll just be one sec. Am I, am I too loud now because I'm standing in front of... Matt, you're not checking the saints, you fuckhead. I'm doing... <laughs> 
I was doing an impassioned speech about Bindi Irwin and Matt zoned out to check the footy scores again. Saints are up. Great. Anyway, I just don't like her, but you know what else I don't like? This is our good friend Kieran here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We met Kieran in Stratford, didn't we, Matt? We did a yeah, gig we in did. Stratford. And uh, Matt came out and chatted to some people after the show and then he came back to me and he's like, Jess, come on, you've got to go and meet someone. Someone here listens to the podcast. And I was like, oh, awesome. And we're chatting away to Kieran. Lovely dude. The real Such lovely a nice guy. guy. I like him a lot. Such i got nice no guy. problem with him or anything That's about him. That's interesting. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we say, so what do you do up here, Kieran? Kieran, what do you do for a living? I'm an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I still love you, Kieran. Kieran bought me beers, so uh, love him Can't a lot. Can't buy my love, Kieran. <laughs> or Bindi Irwin. She's just so patronising. Well, don't talk down to me. I'm older than you. Respect me. <laughs> Fuck off, Bindi. <laughs> Go dance, you little bitch. <laughs> that was too far. Yeah, that was too far. Sorry. I felt, I felt a little don't strong. Don't bitch. But like, oh. And then she was talking about her boyfriend. <laughs> like, oh, I love him so much. You don't know what love is. <laughs> You're a child. It'll end. <laughs> no, that's pro- that is true. <laughs> that's Jess's regret face. <laughs> hey guys, you want to come to my comedy festival show this evening? I got some opinions. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've just seen half of it anyway, so I wouldn't. Pay. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't pay. My show's called "Fuck You, Bindi Irwin." <laughs> Fuck you, Bindi! And I invited her to come and she's not coming. And I was like, yeah, typical. <laughs> I'm busy. Fuck off. And also, Bob. Oh, no. Do not lay a no. finger on Bob. <laughs> He's better now, but the bowl cut went for way too long. <laughs> like, that's fine. <laughs> what age is a bowl cut okay till? Like, five, maybe? At maximum. I know you're shaking your head. I agree. But, like... But a maximum, uh, maybe four or five. But he had it till he was like 106. Like, not okay. He's that's, probably not, that's not on him, though, is it? You hate his mum. Yeah, no, the bowl cut was definitely on him. Mu- oh, no, I don't like Terry either. <laughs> I don't like the Irwins. Don't yeah. worry, Jess. Well, there's someone coming yeah, up you're going to really up. enjoy. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I've got a good feeling about this story. <laughs> yeah. All right, hit me. Matt, do go on. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, Kieran, but also not sorry. You know what you did. <laughs> a couple of years later, uh-huh. after that, uh, the child feeding incident, yep. on September the 4th, 2006, Jess, get ready. I really don't know how to react now. Irwin was filming a program off the coast of Port Douglas in Queensland, Australia. Sounds like any other day. <laughs> Snorkel- Port Douglas, beautiful. <laughs> He was snorkeling. Oh, lovely. Near a stingray. Oh, his favourite. <laughs> this got <laughs> fucked. <laughs> but, but if you think about a stingray, if the big bit's the head, the rest of it, it's kind of all in there. <laughs> yeah. So he was snorkeling, having, you know, having a good time, filming a show. He, oh, he's on the show. Lovely. All of a sudden, he, what was, he, loves. he was struck in the chest b- by the stingray's barb. The stingray's just saying hello. It, it hit yeah. him in the heart. These guys all were previously under the impression that Jess was kind of nice. Were no you? One, I don't know. No one was under that. Uh, <laughs> so hit, hit him. Sadly, I've written here, but obviously not everyone agrees. <laughs> With that phrasing, uh, sadly, Steve died of cardiac arrest shortly after aged only 44 years of age. Age 44 years of age. (laughs) Just to confirm, how old? 44. And I'd just like to say, Jess, if that makes you feel any better, Bindi's dad died when she was young. Does that make you feel... You piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) You absolute piece of shit. I, okay, that doesn't... Okay, that's very sad. And obviously, I think now that I think about it, Steve was the only Owen I did like, and maybe I'm just reacting this way because I miss him. <laughs> but also, you don't get to be a condescending bitch. <laughs> I <Interesting>. love koalas. <laughs> and fuck off. We're going to hear from Bindi shortly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Webby, is that, uh, that live cross is all set up, I imagine? <laughs> she has been watching oh, this whole time. Uh, yeah. Special guest here tonight. Yeah. Um. I just love this podcast. 
<laughs> and you're like, yes. Oh, please. Please don't like this podcast, Bindi. If she's listening, oh, man. She's not listening. <laughs> she's above podcasts. That's a good point. She is. God bless her. <laughs> I love you, Bindi. 5,000 people attended his memorial a few weeks later and an estimated 300 million more around the world tuned into the live television coverage. That's, That's crazy. I know, his, where, I know where you're going and I don't... His young daughter, Bindi, gave off. a speech <laughs> which left no dry eyes in the house. Oh, it sucked so much. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. Matt, are you going to... She said... Read, read? This My is, oh, daddy. This is... Oh, boy. That is... <laughs> That's how it started. That's how it started. I'm just going to read a short part of it here. I have the best daddy in the world and I will miss him every day. This is at a dad's funeral. (laughs) Jess is leaving. When I see a crocodile, I will always think of him and know that daddy made this zoo so everyone could come and learn to love all the animals. Russell Crowe uh, noted from America that Irwin had been headline news all week on CNN saying, this is a quote from, uh, from Russell, there are not many zookeepers who would command that sort of attention, which I think, I think Rusty was spot on with there. <laughs> <laughs> but what an interesting <laughs> point. That went into the memorial as well. <laughs> did so he go on to list all the other zookeepers that would yeah. have guarded the attention? Oh, wait, 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 wait. That was Russell Crowe, yeah. That was Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. Who's now or was dating Terry Irwin? Oh! Oh, what a nice guy! What? Oh, so many zookeepers. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck your wife. <laughs> Is this true? Is this true? Oh, they, they've denied, and that was it's more than ten years since he passed. Look, I have regrets. Um. I mean, surely eventually you're allowed to move on, Jess. <laughs> Not to Russell Crowe. Not Crow. to Russell Crowe. <laughs> no Anyone one is allowed. Anyone but Russell Crowe. No one. Uh, at at the memorial, this is this is quite a nice. A touching tribute, I thought. The zoo workers laid their floral tributes on the ground to spell out the word crikey. Eh? Hey? Oh. oh. Nah, that's all right. I, like I don't know if everyone, the mic picked that up in the room, but geez, there was a lot of tears. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't hear the tears at home. November 15 has been designated Steve Irwin Day, an international tribute held annually in recognition of his life and work. Every year, November 15. Why November 15? Bloody good question, that. <laughs> fun facts. Uh, fun facts. Fun are we going to end with some fun We're facts? We're going to end with some quick fun facts. Oh. I didn't find these myself. I found this website called 10factsabout.com and the headline for this one is 10 fun facts about Steve Irwin. How many of them are actually fun? I haven't read them yet. Let's find <laughs> out. <laughs> you got to do all 10. I'll, we'll see how they go and probably not. Fact number one. Yep. Steve Irwin who was also known as the Crocodile Hunter, was a wildlife expert ironically killed by a stingray. <laughs> that fun. is... That's fun. No, no, fun. That's not fun, and we've already heard that over the last 50 minutes. Is it ironic that he was killed by a stingray as the Crocodile Hunter? No, it's not all that... But that person obviously doesn't have a grasp. Well, Fact number two. Irony. If he got hit by a car... Isn't it ironic that he got died after being hit by a car, even though he's the Crocodile Hunter? <laughs> That is ironic. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> the CEO of RSPCA called Irwin the modern-day Noah. Okay, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, a bit of fun. <laughs> the CEO. Oh, here's a fun one. Oh, finally. At the time of his death, he was struck several hundred times in the chest on, by the tail of a stingray. He died at the scene. <laughs> what a fun Now fact. we're getting fun. Several I don't fun- think it's going to get any more fun than that. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I mean, this is fun. They're all fun. <laughs> this one's fun. Irwin's funeral ceremony and burial was in Australia Zoo n- and not accessible to the public. Oh, my God, that is fun. <laughs> I love access facts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but could the public get in? That's what I want to know. Are you giving up on the fun facts? Probably a good I call. I think so. Yeah, we're almost out of time, actually. We are. We are. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Stewart on Steve Irwin. <laughs> Well, uh, we've all learnt a lot today, especially about Jess's hatred for a young... Holy moly. <laughs> such a wanker. A young... <laughs> Girls can be wankers, right? Well-meaning 18-year-old. Yes, Not well... Uh, nah, there's something there. <laughs> Mark my words. 
eventually it's going to come out that she was on crack this whole time. <laughs> oh, all, all of a sudden there's an issue with crack. <laughs> You're a real piece of work, mate. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that is the uh, end of the show. Thank you so much for coming out today. Now, this is our second uh, last one. We've got our final uh, podcast here next week. And we've got yeah. a special guest coming there in. There's going to be four of us squeezing onto the little stage. Chair. It's going to be very tight. Yeah. We've got to get a fourth go chair. just people again. It's fine. <laughs> You'll just go away. But yes, there will be a, a fourth guest. So uh, if you're listening at home, this is your final chance to see the show live at the uh, Comedy Festival. And the final chance uh, this week to see uh, Matt and Jess's comedy shows. Not true. Can't see it next week as well. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but oh, this, this is going out on Wednesday. Wednesday. At yeah. home, at home. Sorry. When it comes out on Sorry. Wednesday, that's so right. So my show is called Pretty Dry. It's at the Chinese Museum, 8.30 nightly. Tonight, 7.30 for the people in the room. I'll hand you a flyer out the back. And uh, please, buddy, come. The uh, It's been selling out nearly every night, but it has not tonight. And I'd love all of you to come. <laughs> he says this every night. I swear every other night was full. <laughs> I swear, I swear. <laughs> and uh, the, there's a discount code, Pretty Post, no, Pretty Podcast, you if you want to get discounted tickets. Yeah. And you should, because you, you deserve should. it, you guys. You do, you deserve it. And JP, you're? My show is on in half an hour, um, and it's like a five minute walk from here, and you should definitely all come. I'm going to be there. Let's form some, a conga line <laughs> all the way. My show's called Twins, and it's with Naomi Higgins, and it's very good. Um, and uh, so far tonight, we've sold three tickets, and that is my cousin, her husband, and stepdaughter. So. Holy shit, please come. <laughs> um, there's a promo code of Eggies because <laughs> it's Easter and I thought that was pretty funny. Um, for $15 tickets, so come along. It's going to be super fun and then you're still done by like six and I'll, I'll bitch about Bindi Irwin some more if you want or if you don't want, I'll take requests. And then time. There will literally be so few of you, I'll take requests. <laughs> time to get over to my show after that then, right? Yes, Matt, uh, which I will be at. Yeah. Okay. Great, who cares? Please do. Sit next to Jess. <laughs> <laughs> One of you, or two of you, if she's in the middle, will be able to sit next to Jess. Uh, guys, thank you so much for coming out. Give yourselves a big round of applause for coming out. Support the show live. Thanks so much, everybody. We do appreciate it. It's so great to see you here. But until next week, we will say goodbye. Bye. Thank you. bit of fun hey just a little bit of fun there on the on the podcast live we still we just we love um doing it in front of you guys if you're not from melbourne and you haven't had a chance to check it out um we we're keen to get around and do it elsewhere so let us know if you are uh, outside of melbourne where you are and if you reckon that um it'd be worthwhile us coming and doing it live for you maybe maybe not Tell me to, you can also tell me if your town would definitely not want us to come. Also, that would be handy knowledge to have as well. We'll put a line through your town or city. Um, obviously, we're coming for Ohio at some point soon, but we want to get around Australia and, you know, around the world, maybe into space, whatever. Like, we're open to options. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, before we go, I should always thank the uh, Patreon Sponsors, we we uh, uh, like to thank a few of our, our special supporters uh, this week. Dave obviously put a bit of work into him last week. I just listened to that earlier, and he, he looked up a dictionary and stuff. I'm just going to open up the page now and read them straight off the thing and see if I can... Uh, anyway, how about this? Uh, I'd love to... Uh, big thanks to Jordan Theobald, uh, obviously Jordan being a, a, a basketball, he started his career out at uh, North Carolina. I don't know if anyone knows that fact. That's one of the great facts I have about Jordan. Someone did send through a few other facts about North Carolina, and I can't remember them. Not relevant to jo Jordan uh, Theobald here anyway. Let me just click on him, see if I can find out whereabouts he's from. Oh, he's, from, he's an Australian. Anyway, he's from New South Wales. Good on you, Jordan. We should come up and visit you. I think Sydney seems realistic if um, that's anywhere near you. Uh, I'd also love to thank uh, Jordan Theobald again because I don't know if I quite hit that hard enough. You're a real good guy, Jordan. And, and I I got a picture in my mind of being, you're the classic bronzed Aussie, I reckon. You got the long flowing hair, you surf in the morning, you catch crocodiles at night and in between you just bloody be nice to people. I don't know if that's a classic Australian thing, but that's what makes you different. 
that sets you apart from uh, your neighbours, those assholes down the road. Yeah, I'd also love to thank Brian Dillon. Brian Dillon, Dillon, uh, Bob Dillon, actually may be related to you. Probably not because it's entirely different spelling, and I don't think that's his real name. But he just won uh, a Nobel Prize for literature, I think. And I think, uh, in a similar way, uh, Brian Dillon, you are also a, a wordsmith. You're an Irishman, right? But you'd spell your name the English way, Brian with an I, which I don't like. No, I do like it because you've done it. You've turned me around. I'm traditionally a Brian with a Y kind of guy, but uh, you've brought me back. Brian with an I is is my new preferred spelling of Brian. You are a, a classic Irishman, I'd say, which is, uh, you know, you uh, surf in the mornings, you catch crocs at night, and in between, you're just a bloody nice guy. Well done. I appreciate your work. I don't know if you'd believe this, but I'm nearly entirely made up of Irish heritage, which I think everyone says. I, I met a few Irish people in my uh, backpacking days, and they found that very annoying when people would tell them that they had Irish heritage, they're like, yeah, everyone fucking does, you all right? Like, oh, okay, cool. Got shut down. I thought I was, I was just trying to connect. But anyway, you know, they weren't into it, and that's fine. And finally, I'd love to thank... Sorry, Brian. That felt negative. I love your work, Brian. You are a gun in all the good ways. Um, and finally, I'd love to thank Scott Ho. He's a Californian. I'd... Uh, I'd love to be in California right now. In my head, that is always sunshiny. It's a sunshiny place, and um, it's where the OC is from. It's where Californication is from. Uh, I, I think that one's pretty clear, and uh, all the all those great shows as well. Uh, There's always sun shining in California. Uh, Scott Ho, classic guy. You know what I reckon he gets up to? He catches crocodiles in the morning. He's a bit of a wildcat like that, and he surfs at night. Uh, he doesn't care about being able to see the waves and that sort of stuff. A lot of people say it's dangerous to surf at night, but not Scott Ho. He is a mad dog. Scott Howe, mad dog and a wild cat. He, uh, he loves and hates himself, but he, but he does it in all the right ways. Thanks so much, Scott. What a mess that was, and I think you would expect nothing less from me. Um, just uh, wrapping up, I'd love, uh, love for you guys to get in touch. Let us know if you want us to do anything different, anything the same. Just, I mean, we're not necessarily going to take it on board, but we'll definitely listen to you. Um, and uh, if you want to get in contact, it's dogoonpod at gmail.com or it's at dogoonpod for Twitter. I think Facebook's the same, dogoonpod. And what's the other one? Instagram, also dogoonpod, which makes it pretty straightforward for you guys, I reckon. And um, I don't think you need it to be straightforward. I reckon you guys are very intelligent and could figure out a more complex system, but it's more for us and, you know, just to streamline things. So don't take any offence, please, because uh, none was intended. Um, we definitely believe you would be up to a more complex uh, more complex sort of moniker than that. But um, ugh, what am I saying, for fuck's sake? All right. Um, thanks for tuning in. Please uh, do get, uh, stay in touch. One more live show and then we're back to studio time, which is... I'm looking forward to them and also going to miss the live audiences because it's been so fun to miss, um, miss you. It's fun to miss you and uh, it was fun also to meet you. Um, particularly Joe Boyd, who kept me company through the last quarter yesterday. Uh, Collingwood supporter and she she uh, stood there with me uh, as we drank beers and watched the Saints get up in a close encounter. 14 points. Go Saints. Well done, team. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all. And... Oh, ladies. <laughs>